plus supplements, things like omega and antioxidants and a whole host of other non-prescription pills that are supposed to help us lose weight, live longer and just be healthier. But few of those claims are backed up by science. So what's worth taking and what's not? Well, our health specialist, Ali Zentner, is here to help explain it to us. Uh, Ali, this is a multi-billion dollar industry in Canada, isn't it? How do people know what's worth and what's not? So it's, it's about three and a half billion dollars that we spend annually on supplementation in Canada, almost 23 billion dollars in the United States. The problem with this industry is that uh, it's not regulated like the pharmaceutical industry and so claims can be made at will without the science to back it up. What's happened lately is that we're now seeing randomized control trials in particular of certain supplementations to see if in fact the promises they make are scientifically valid. So let's go through some of them starting with omega-3s. What does the research show? So large-scale trials in primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease, no benefit. Now, understand that a woman who eats fish twice a week has a 20% reduction of cardiovascular disease. But again, cherry picking out the omega-3s, no benefit. It may be eating fish generally that helps you, but Absolutely. not picking out the omega-3. It, it's the sum of the parts issue again. What about antioxidants, things like beta carotene, vitamin A, that are supposed to be good for preventing disease? In fact, large-scale trials across the board, and these are dating back five to seven years, have shown no benefit. Some antioxidant supplementation may indeed cause a trend towards harm from a cardiovascular disease issue. What about vitamin E that's supposed to help with heart disease, I think. Yeah, so this is a 12-year-old trial, large-scale, randomized, double-blind placebo, trend towards harm from a cardiovascular disease issue. From vitamin E? Absolutely. Good for your skin, put it on, you know, rub it on your wound if you want to, but don't be taking it to prevent heart disease. Vitamin C, a lot of people think it'll help prevent colds. So there is small suggestions that maybe it will shorten the length of a cold, but interesting, and this is about three months old now, shows an increased risk in kidney stones in men. So again, weighing the risk, versus the benefit. Now, are you saying then that people should just toss out all their vitamins in their supplements? No, and again, this only applies to supplementation over and above what you're already getting from a healthy diet. This doesn't speak to people, for example, who are iron deficient, who are taking supplementation to replace a vitamin deficiency. And most significantly, that speaks to vitamin D, where we do have data showing cancer prevention, a Canadian study, in fact, showing a reduction in cancer prevention. And I would argue that most Canadians, because we live in a more northern climate are vitamin D deficient. I, I guess the message really is healthy diet again, isn't it? Balanced Absolutely. Diet. So if you're eating five to seven servings of vegetables and fruit a day, you don't need to be supplementing over and above it. And understand that when it comes to supplementation, you might be getting too much of a good thing. All right. Dr. Ali Zentner, thanks so much. Thank you.